When it comes to treating cancer and chronic disease, the name of the game is stopping inflammation. And there's no more powerful medicine than what's on your plate. So I always recommend an anti-inflammatory diet. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. That was Dr. George Papanicolaou, a leading expert in functional and integrative medicine. Dr. Papanicolaou brings a unique perspective to the complex world of cancer treatment. Emphasizing the importance of a holistic approach that addresses the whole person, not just the disease. In this insightful video, Dr. Papanicolaou will share his expertise on combining conventional cancer treatments with complementary therapies to optimize patient outcomes. Discover how functional medicine can empower individuals to take control of their health during and after cancer treatment. Get ready to be inspired as Dr. Papanicolaou discusses the latest advancements in cancer care and the role of nutrition, lifestyle modifications, and mind-body practices in the journey to healing. Let's listen to the doctor tell us about an example of an anti-inflammatory diet. The Mediterranean diet, with its focus on fish, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, and olive oil, with meat maybe once a week, good dairy choices, and most importantly, severe limits on sugar and carbohydrates is a great choice for a person who wants to stop inflammation when they're treating their cancer or their chronic disease. Not all sugars are created equal. Focus on whole fruits and veggies where natural sugars are packaged with fiber and nutrients. The real culprits are added sugars hiding in processed foods and drinks. These come in many forms like high fructose corn syrup, table sugar, and agave nectar. Limit these extras to keep your diet on the healthy track. Sugar is a potent trigger for inflammation. It also creates obesity. And obesity itself puts you at risk for 13 different cancers. What else can someone do to reduce inflammation in their diet? Targeted supplements can be an important part of a nutritional regimen when you're trying to prevent or support somebody who has cancer. Antioxidants can be critical. I'll include vitamin C, CoQ10, and omega-3 omega fatty acids. For detoxification support, I'll include glutathione, which is a master detoxifying molecule in the body, silymarin, NAC, and for women, to help with estrogen removal, DIM, and calcium deglucurate. Immune support will include mushroom compounds like turkey tail, and then some minerals like zinc, selenium, and I'll also include vitamin D. Thank you, doctor, for that supplement list. By the way, one Brazil nut has about 96 micrograms of selenium, which is about double the recommended daily allowance. Now tell us about eliminating tumor growths. Recently, I've been adding in targeted supplements that can limit tumor growth. Tumors secrete a chemical called vascular endothelial growth factor. This growth factor allows the tumor to develop a blood supply of its own that keeps it growing. Wormwood, also known as Artemisia, is a compound that can suppress VEGF and limit tumor growth by eliminating that angiogenesis or vascular generation or blood supply that the tumor uses to grow. Doctor, tell us about other areas of concern. Brain health is a really important topic. It comes up in almost every conversation with my patients, and dementia seems to be the fear. Most of all my patients, somewhere in their list of complaints, is gonna mention something about memory loss or forgetfulness. And they start to worry, is this the beginning of Alzheimer's dementia? Quite honestly, they should worry, but not because they're having some lapses in memory or forgetfulness, but because science is showing us that you can begin the process of developing Alzheimer's dementia 20 to 30 years before you wake up one morning forgetting your wife's name. It's important when you're young to start thinking about your brain health. You might not want to, and you might not think you have to because you're young. But as I said before, you need to start thinking about brain health before it's too late and changes begin. But what is happening in your brain when you're 30 and 40. You're maturing. You're, you're probably starting to feel mature and, and really getting a good grasp of who you are. 
Well, that's because the brain is still developing, believe it or not. And there are different parts of the brain that are now becoming interconnected. And as those connections occur, you're getting more self-regulation, more self-control, and more awareness of your emotions. At the same time, your brain is still putting down myelin on your neurons. Myelin is an insulation that allows those neurons to fire and move information very fast. And the more myelin you have on your neurons, the faster you're gonna be able to think. And it's still happening at quite a rapid clip. It starts to level off by the time you're you know, in your 40s or, or middle age. But in your 30s and 40s, you're still laying down a lot of myelin. Interestingly enough, in my, in my practice, I do have a lot of 30 and 40 year olds beginning to complain of slower cognition, some brain fog, and even some memory lapses that they hadn't had before. And I think it has a lot to do with stress. Greater college debt, waiting to get married in your 30s, maybe even starting a family while you're trying to get a foothold on your career or a confluence of events that just didn't exist a generation ago. So what do we do to work around all these stresses? The first place to start in building brain power and avoiding early cognitive decline is building stress resilience. We all have stress, it's everywhere, but it's not meant to be chronic. It's really meant to last for seconds. The bear or the lion jumps out of the weeds. All of a sudden you start to run. Your adrenal glands have pumped out cortisol, followed by norepinephrine. Now your vision narrows, your heart's pumping faster, your muscles are stronger than they were seconds before. Now you either get eaten or you get an opportunity to pass your genes on to the next generation, but it happens in seconds. When we're under chronic stress with marriages and, and work and kids and illness, and it's constant, our cortisol levels are gonna be elevated. And that elevation in cortisol leads to problems that will result in early cognitive decline. What does stress do to our bodies? High levels of cortisol actually have a huge impact on the hippocampus. It will cause dysfunction and shrinking of the hippocampus. And that's where you retain and form memories. Elevated levels of cortisol also impact the prefrontal cortex. And that's where you do your executive function, organization, and critical thinking. When the cortisol is too high, you're gonna see difficulties in those areas of your brain function. What else does high levels of cortisol do? High levels of cortisol will decrease a hormone called Clotho. Clotho regulates the aging process. It also provides your brain with resilience against toxins, many of which can lead to Alzheimer's dementia. What else can we do to manage these diseases? A really important study done at UCLA in 2015 looked at long-term meditators, comparing them to those that didn't meditate at all. And they found that long-term meditators, people that had been meditating at least 20 years, had far greater volume of gray matter in their brain. Other studies have shown with just three months of meditation, you see structural changes in the brain that impact function. The corpus callosum, which is the band of neurons that connect the right to left brain, actually gets thicker. That allows for the right and left brain to communicate and enhance your creativity. You also see an increase in the size of the hippocampus, that part of the brain that's responsible for retaining memory, consolidating it, and maintaining it. And you also will see a shrinking in the size of the amygdala. It's the amygdala is responsible for regulating fear, anger, and anxiety. So meditation has these great benefits that you can see in a very short period of time. Gray matter is your memory powerhouse. Packed with neuronal cell bodies, it's where information processing and memory formation happen. A healthy amount of gray matter is linked to sharper memory. While it doesn't guarantee a perfect memory, brain healthy habits like a good diet, exercise, quality sleep, mental stimulation, and stress management like meditation can all support your gray matter and potentially boost your memory function. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.